Congo, Point Noir Port struggles to recover. For eight years, the port of Point Noir has been at the center of economic activities of the Republic of Congo, but the fall in oil prices in 2014 plunged the Central African country into an economic crisis from which the port infrastructure is struggling to recover, and since then several companies have closed. The few old out are living in uncertainty every day. The petroleum industry is the main source of employment in Point Noir, a city of over 1 billion, 1 million people, but 50,000 people has lost their job in this sector since the start of crisis. For the president of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, DJ Mavonzela, we need to revive the economic and in out view recovery requires diversification, but also at the oil level through the effective implementation of content local that will allow to have purchases operated by the oil tanker locally and tough to revive the economy a little bit. But a rescue plan for the International Monetary Fund was approved in July 2000 and 19 with the country's growth forecast on the rise, the port of Point Noir also experienced an increase in its traffic. Congolese President Denis Sassou has announced the end of recession. However, all optimism is concluded by the country's debt, which announced which amount to more than two billion euro. Let's go over to South Africa with Eskom cuts power again and wait for new CEO. South African electricity company Eskom resumed power outage over the weekend, sitting the vulnerability of the production system when the new CEO of the public group, Andrew De Ritter, is due to take office on Monday a little earlier than expected after a month of December marketed by power rationing, including a very severe episode. The struggling company decided to impose cuts again on Saturday to allow repair on equipment and then extended this rationing to Sunday. The system remained constrained and fragile, and this loud shedding will unfortunately continue Sunday until Monday morning, said Eskom in a statement. Due to poor maintenance for years, the system remained vulnerable to unplanned outage. Eskom produced 95% of country electricity. Most of it comes from poorly designed, old and poorly maintained coal fire power plant, a situation which regularly causes cuts. The group is collapsing under a debt of 26 billion euro. In July, it announced a record net loss of 20.7 billion rand, 1.3 billion euro for the year's ending March. In my November, the South African government announced the appointment of petrochemical specialist Andrew De Ritter to head Eskom, senior executive of the oil and chemical group Sassol for 20 years. Andrew De Ritter has been the CEO of Africa's largest packaging company, NAPAC, since 2014. Initially, he was due to take office on January 15, but his arrival was postponed to Monday. He will have to carry out a restructuring plan for Eskom, a symbol of mismanaging and corruption during the reign of ex-president Jacob Zuma from 2009 to 2018. Let's go over to Rwanda with the center to anticipate money laundering activities. The Rwandan parliament adopted a law establishing the Financial Intelligence Center intended to prevent economic and financial crimes. The new law is part of the package of bill introduced in Parliament early last month by Claudine Uera, Minister of State for Economic Plan at the Ministry of Finance and Planning. This institution will collect and disseminate the results of the surveillance of financial crisis activities such as money laundering, the financing of terrorist activities, said the chairman of the Parliament Budget Committee, Omar Munyeneza, after examining the bill. Third, as soon as it is operationalized, the center will be responsible for monitoring the accounting transaction of financial institutions deemed suspicious and for accessing electronic data and information stored on the servers for financial intelligence purpose. The law also provides the center of power to control or intercept communications authentic in private documents on financial transactions and can provide or exchange information with the Financial Intelligence Authority in another country. Despite 
its acclaimed economic exploit around the world, Rwanda, like many countries, is not immune to illegal financial activities. Portions to Nigeria with Dangote, who is now the 96th richest man in the world. He is reported by the Bloomberg New Portal to have ranked in $4.3 billion in profit over the courses of the year 2019. The 62 years old indigenous of Nigeria, North Central Kano State, has held the title of Africa richest for the past few years, according to the Bloomberg Valuana Index. Dangote ended the decade with a new world of amount $15 billion, making him the 96th wealthiest man in the world. This year, 2020, is a critical one for one of the, his biggest projects, an oil refinery and petrochemical plant by the Dangote Group is expected to be launched in Nigeria, commercial city of Lagos. When completed, it will be Africa's biggest private refinery, with analysts stressing that it will help Nigerian economy in many ways. The plan has the capacity to meet more than Nigeria's entire fuel consumption and could transform an economy that currently imports all its African product needs. Dangote is also constructing a fertilized factory on the same site, the Bloomberg reported added. Concrete with Liberia economic crisis, President Weya facing protests. The Patriot Council called for a demonstration on Monday to demand the resignation of President George Weya. This coalition of civil society organization criticized the head of state for not allowing the country to get out of the serious economic crisis it is going through. Judge Weya was not the source of the economic crisis in Liberia. The country is one of the poorest in the world, and the Ebola epidemic of the year 2014-2016 has already plunged it into recession. Except that since the former footballer came to power two years ago, the situation has not really improved. On the contrary, according to the International Monetary Fund, growth has fallen from 2.5% in 2017 at 0.4% this year. Inflation is close to 25% over the same period. In particular, the, M the IMF report on his concern about governance and corruption. At issue, the numerous cases of embezzlement, trading in influence of favoritism in the award of public contract, the more publicized of these cases has even caused their post of several senior leaders of the Central Bank of Liberia, who has orchestrated the embezzlement of more than 80 million euros. George Weya, who was elected on the promise to act in favor of the poorest, can however boast of having made the university free and having launched infrastructure projects, road construction, slum repair, construction sites themselves, tarnished from some by corruption cases.